Greetings and welcome to this episode on Geeks First. Today we're going to talk about Star Wars Unlimited and we have the pre-release kit in my hand. And this time we're going to see if I get a full six packs versus the five. All that and more right now. Now while it was kind of an offhanded joke, I did actually attend a pre-release event and my box was missing a pack. So, I like misprints, and that was fun, but it was really rough to try to build, so I think the store owner, thank you very much, opened a, uh, another box and gave me a random pack out of that, so we'll see if we get the same luck, and uh, at least I caught that one on camera, so I can probably insert a little bit of a WTF moment right there when we see that happening. All right, well, this is your Spark of the Rebellion, May the Force Be With You pre-release kit. Six booster packs, two pre-release promos, and a partridge and a pear tree. 19 counters and a quick start. Rules, deck building guide, dividers, and a deluxe deck box. Now, I want to delineate something that the deluxe deck box is different than the two folded deck boxes that came in the starter. Now, I have one of these deck boxes right here, and we can compare the two. I don't really know why it's called Deluxe, because to me, I think they're about the same, but I'll let you be the judge of that. So this has a satisfying, non-saran-wrapped kind of locale, but it does have a peel strip. For those that enjoy ASMR, that is what it sounds like. Now I'm going to keep this on camera here, and we're going to pray we get a total of six packs, because that's what my joke was, right? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ha <laughs> ha! Got it. Perfect. All right, so inside you can see that everything is nice and organized. You got your promo cards here, your deck box, which is useful to carry cards. And similar to the starter, you have a building a pre-release little guide. You have tokens and Spark the Rebellion quick start rules. One thing to note is, is that these do appear identical from both the two-player starter and the pre-release event box. Similar with the tokens, the tokens appear to be the exact same across both. There is no, you know, delineation between having one or the other. So that's exciting. The only difference is, is you get this building a pre-release deck guide, which we'll go ahead and read right now. It says to build a pre-release deck, your pre-release deck uses the cards that you've opened from the six boosters. It'll have one leader, one base, and a minimum of 30 cards. So it talks about your leaders, bases, and your deck building. The remaining 30 plus cards can include any number of other items. And then it walks you through the card types, resource costs, and asks, you know, for advice. It gives you some generalities here, like including 20 to 25 units of ground and 15 to 20 uh, of ground and 5 to 10 space. So total of 20 to 25 units total and maybe 5 to 10 upgrades or events. So there's, there's some niceness that they've included in that guide. That is useful. Now, we talked about the deck box, and inside of this, this is the, quote, <clears throat> deluxe deck box. The deluxe deck box differs in size and shape from the ones in the starter, but they are still made of the same paper. Now, granted, the deluxe deck box here is thicker, so it'll hold more cards, which probably is a thing considering you have six packs, but you do get an interesting little divider, so maybe you can keep your tournament cards that you're using on the one side and your stuff on the other. Uh, it's still nice, don't get me wrong, this has more of like a, maybe a waxy feel on the inside of one one part, but nonetheless it is still a paper box. Uh, I have noticed that at least on the ones that I have behind me, if I do this and bend them in, if you do it too far it'll get caught, but if you do it just right you'll have it to where this is much more of an actual box shape. So we'll put that off to the side. Now in this pack, you're going to get two of the heroes, which is going to be a Darth Vader and a Luke, and they are foil. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this one because I already have these heroes behind me here. All right, and with the power of moving magic, we're going to open that pack. Ready? Here we go. There we go. All right. Now, in that pack, you're going to get one Darth Vader and one Luke Skywalker that are going to be foil and these are, I believe, identical to the ones that are in your starter kit, if you bought the two-player starter. So there's a nice aspect here where basically they're making different rarity tiers for the same 
cards. So I like that. That's that's nice. It gives them some, some variety. Doesn't mean you have to have it, but it could mean if you're chasing it and you really want it, that you could. So these are two heroes that you're guaranteed to get in there. And then you get your six packs. In this case, our pack arts are two, two, and two. Let's go ahead and jump right into opening some cool packs and see what we get. I don't know if there is a really pack trick to this, but we got an IG-88 leader. We got a Crestro City, which that's going to be a double cider. We got Snow Speeder, Destroyer, Resilient, Death Star Stormtrooper. There's a Skiff Escort. Bike. This card, man, I had some problems getting around this. Disarm. It's a tactic. Rogue Operative. Volunteer Soldier. This is generic. I like it. Protector. Isra Bergen. I don't know what that's from. Ooh, we got Attack Pound of Delta. <gasps> Chimera! We got a Death Star. Or no, Star Destroyer. I was like, I thought it was Death Star. Oh, Star Destroyers are so cool. I like it. We got our restored arc. Well, that's pack one. Pack two. We're going to go Leia next. Pack two. We got Boba the Fat. Boba the Fat. Oh, Boba the Fat. Yeah, Boba the Fat. He is... He's a different leader. He definitely is a different leader. He's a different kind of leader. There's Capital City. All right, what do we got? We got Ardent Sympathizer... Academy Training. Moment of Peace. Ooh, Regional Sympathizers. Gorilla Attack Pod. Patrolling V Wing. Swooping Racers. Probe Droid. That's sweet. Ooh, Echo Base Defender. Look at that. Oh, this is one of the uh, the borderless ones. Hoth, man. I freaking love Hoth. Benthic Two Tubes. Inferno 4. I haven't seen that one. That's pretty cool. General Dadana. General Kareel. And a reinforced walker. So that's pretty cool. I don't want to pull any of the weird special ones out. I don't think we got any extended uh, frame in that first one. Uh, what is that? Uh, is that just a rare... I don't remember. Where is he? Where'd he go? He's just a rare. I can't believe the Chimera is just a rare. That's crazy. It's crazy talk, man. I just I love Star Destroyers, man. They're capital vehicles, capital ships. They're expensive, but they're good. They go... Alright. Chewy. What do we got? Mr. Chewy. I mean, nostalgia has a whole, whole thing. Ig 88. Iggy, Iggy, Iggy. We got Administrator Tower. Vanquish, huh? Okay. Occupy the siege tank. Echo trooper. So there's a there's a classic good side by side comparison we can leverage here to show you the borders difference between the two. Guardian of the Winter, partisan insurgent, fleet lieutenant, bounty hunter crew, restock, Mister Sharpshooting reflexes. Carter Space Thingy Mon Montha Mon 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 Ooh, listen. There apparently is a home one in this. Gideon Hasks and Super Laser Technician. Yeah, there apparently is some some ships um, that exist. There's some ships. There be some ships, of course. There's some ships everywhere. All right, what do we got? We got Chewbacca. That's cool. Command Center. Oh, yeah, I should look. So, apparently, even these can be borderless. Oh! Ho-ho! <laughs> look at that! IG-88 was the very first pack. I didn't even notice that. So, look at that! We got a, we got a leader that was borderless. Cool. Ta-da! Not that that's good or bad. I don't know. I'm sure somebody wants it. There's a Chewbacca. I mean, if you're doing collection, right? So, all right. Katina Cogsworth, Death Trooper, Wampa, Super Technician, 
Ooh, that's close. That's a that's a two two three. That's that's close to my my little bears analogy. Two two three. Maybe that's maybe that is considered the the grizzly bear. Power of the dark side. Green. Oh baby. Ooh, rebel salt. Spock of the rebellion. The name of the set. I'm sure that's important to somebody. Sabine Wren. That's interesting. Kind of neat. Definitely a unique aspect there. Okay. Last two packs of the pre-release kit. So we'd build a deck with, with just these cards. Ooh, we got Thrawn. Look at that. Cool. Mr. Thrawn. Imperial Officer. That's pretty sweet. Catacombs. Okay. We got a repair man, 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 man. Vanguard Infantry. Cloud City. Keep on fighting. Alliance Dispatcher. ATST Baby. Ooh, Seven Fleet Defender. Frontier ATRT. Fifth Brother. Take down Fallen Lights. Oh hey, 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 this is an extended. Look at that. Or hyper hyperspace. That's cool. We got a uh, Lando Calrissian, baby. And uh, open fire. There's lots of stormtroopers on that one. That's pretty sweet. Um, attached to a non-vehicle unit. So did that? Does that mean every pack gets two rares? I feel like every pack didn't have two rares, but maybe I'm wrong. All right. Last but not least, Moth Tarkin in the house nice oh hey echo base this is an extended extended echo base that's cool we got a cargo juggernaut spec for soldier steadfast battalion guards jetta aggregator waylock syndicate lackeys maximum the firepower ATRT Frontier. Look at that. It's uh, extended. Chewbacca. Overwhelming tactics. Sabine Ren. Last but not least, it binds all things. That's a rare. And Regional Governor. Interesting. Okay. So that is all of those cards. From a perspective of like just opening a few packs here that's 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 a lot of choices so your heroes you got one two three four five um, is ig88 in there already yeah Echo base is essentially the same as command center, so that's not really. It really wants me to build a Hoth deck because it got he gave me Hoth cards. Okay, so if we were to look at the aspect of trying to build a deck, we need to consider our options as our uh, leaders. So we have overwhelmingly Imperial in this build and we have one uh, light side leader. So we have five to choose from here. Uh, one of them is a rare, the others are commons. Now from the location perspective we all have 30s but we have death star cloud city jetta and i'm guessing any of these since they don't say light or dark could be used with any of them so we could expand the aspect ratios uh, of these with one of those sites so let's take a look who might be an interesting person to uh to work with here grand admiral theron when the action phase starts, look at the top card of each player's deck. Reveal the top card of the player's deck. Exhaust all units that cost the same as or less than the card revealed. That, I mean, sounds exhausting. 
Uh, and then when he flips over, when the active phase starts with the top card, you may reveal the top card. So, okay. Um, he turns into a 2 7. Attack with the unit you control more than one. Defending player gets plus one. Interesting. When an enemy unit leaves play, you exhaust his leader and then play a unit that costs three or less from hand, paying its cost to gain Sentinel. So I'm going to imagine we would pick Imperial. I mean, that says Underworld Droid, Underworld Droid, Underworld Wookiee. But they all have the aspect for the dark side. So we overwhelmingly have a an aspect for dark side. Uh, let's take a look at some of the, the cards that we got. Now, I would say the approach I would probably take to, to this would have been uh, divide by color. So... You're not going to get every color, but the border of the card is, I believe, the primary um, aspect. So you'll see that you'll probably have a total of, I believe, six or seven if you go gray. So there's yellow, red, green, green, blue, red, black. This is going to let us evaluate the cards that are in each of these pools so that you can start to evaluate um, what options that you may want to try and play with. That's a blue, a red, a red, a red, a green, that's blue, green, yellow, yellow, colorless. And this will hopefully um, give us some indications of kind of the direction we may want to go if you see an overwhelmingly large amount of good cards in a particular pool. But I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you're going to have to have a minimum of, uh, let's call it, two aspects in a, a deck. I don't think you can really, with a, with a pre-con, go... Or, I'm sorry, with this uh, pre-release deck, I don't think you can go with a single aspect. I just don't think there's enough uh, in there. So, as I have divvied these out, I'm just going to sleeve these foils here real quick. So, this is a red foil, as an example. This is a another red foil. Green foil. Blue foil. Green foil, blue foil, and then we had the sights, the extended. That's a hero. That's a red. That's a AT. Uh, it's a what is this ATRT unit? Is that considered a a generic? Yeah, it must be. It's a generic. Okay, and then green. All right. So knowing that we are primarily in the aspect. Let's see if any of these look like they're useful. These are Rebel. So we have General Dodonna. These are kind of higher cost. So I'm going to go ahead and say let's sidebar using anything that is um, <clears throat> and we'll put these in as the start. Let's, uh, let's just pick one and go with it. Let's assume um, I don't know, these all sound fun to play. So let's take a gander at, if we were to go with, um, we can just spam experience, maybe? That'd be kind of fun. Uh, we don't really have access to blue, so a lot of these blue cards here are going to be harder to to leverage unless we add a blue um, site so let's take a look at maybe the blues if we want to add a blue site so uh, imperial rebel imperial 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 
Fringe Trooper. Rebel. Okay, there's only two Rebels. So we'll take those and put them to the side. Let's look at, these are upgrade cards, event card. There's another unit card. Let's take all the units out. Okay. You got some straight blues, and then you got a blue with a dark side aspect. Gideon Hask is a pretty big cost, but he's a 5-5. Five five. And give an experience, so let's say yeah to him. Deal two damage to a friendly ground unit and deal two damage to an enemy. Sure, let's say yep. I know that's going to be fun. I like space, so let's call that one. Shielded. When played, if you control another unit, heal four damage from your base. That might be a good late game card, but we'll put it to the side for now. Uh, Imperial Officer. Name a card. I don't know their deck well enough in a pre-con to be able to leverage that. Um... Let's just use that. This is a 2 2 2. And then let's look at some of these upgrades. So, event, 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 upgrade, upgrade, event. Okay, so events. Defeat a non leader. That's great. Heal from a unit or base? Sure. Uh, defeat a unit with five or less remaining. That sounds fun. Heal up to three damage if you control a force unit. You may deal that much damage to another unit. Hey, you know what I forgot? I actually do have access to some other heroes. Because remember, we have access to Vader or uh, Luke. So, um, I was incorrect there. I had more options. Um, man, this is hard. I really like Power of the Dark Side. It saved me multiple times. So, it looks like blue is all about now this because there's two blue probably not worth trying to throw in because we don't have um have much in the way of that so let's call that our blue pool and then probe droids awesome maximum firepower a friendly imperial unit deals damage equals power to another unit and then a, another friendly imperial unit deals damage equals power to the same unit okay so it's like really trying to wipe something out ATST is expensive, but if you get it out, oh wait, that'll be fun. Uh, let's let's pick our official hero. So we know we're going to pick a blue capital city for our location. So if we were to now take a look at our heroes, we could pick Vader, which would give us red, or we could pick Tarkin, which gives us green, or Thrawn, or Boba. So those are those are our multiple choice avenues here. So if we call that our core, we can have a Boba Fett central or a Thrawn central deck. These are that's Rebel here. That's a Rebel. We do have a capital ship, a fighter, bounty hunter, vehicle. I'm not seeing a lot. That's Rebel Underworld. I'm going to avoid for the moment. I'm going to avoid this because I don't think we have enough. Uh, we probably do, but like I really want to run the Chimera, but I don't want to pay ten for it. That's 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 just yeah, that's a lot. So let's look at um, IG88. Hello, want to see some of the cool artwork? And tax with a unit. Mm, it's a 5-4. This, this flips on turn 5, this flips turn 5, this flips turn 7. Let's go with, because we got this Fallen, let's go with the him. So we're going to probably not run much of the green, which sucks because I really liked some of these green cards. Really liked them. I really liked them. But let's go with red. Uh, that's a rebel, that's a no, that's not, that's a rebel, that's a trooper. Rebel, Imperial, Imperial, Rebel, Imperial, Capital Ship, Underworld Creature, Imperial, Imperial, Rebel, Rebel, Rebel. So we'll get rid of the Rebels. Alright, what did they say, 30? We probably are not at 30. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 actually. So let's look at, uh, that's a rebel, a rebel, a rebel, a rebel, a rebel. So I really can't use those without paying more. Um, 
we could throw some of those in. We, we looked at the blues earlier, right? But so we can, let's put these, they don't cost us anything. They're the fringe and restock. There we go. That way we're not having to pay more. We, we're using the, the built-in aspects. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 20, 29, and 30. Meaning we have blue, red, and some colorless. And we have the villainous aspect. There you go. I'm gonna call that my deck. Um, obviously we could try and build some other characters with the other parts of the deck here. We have a lot more cards that we didn't use here. So I would say that there, there are many possibilities. That is just one of those numerable possibilities. So awesome. Well, because that is where we are currently, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead and make myself big. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you appreciated that uh, kind of run through of the Spark of the Rebellion pre-release kit. How I thought through the process of making a deck, kind of a little bit of review of the uh, premium deluxe, I'm sorry, deluxe deck box, and just the little items that come with the set. Hopefully, you will enjoy your pre-release event if you get to attend one. I know they're still happening this weekend. I believe there's a couple LGSs in town that are still going to have some on, say, Sunday. I might actually go and attend one more just because it's really fun to get some reps in with this game. So, hit that like, share, subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or anything you'd like to know more about this game, I will be doing a how-to-play video at some point. But, uh, yeah. So, until next time, may your games be fun and your friendships grow. Cheers.